second day. Yeah. So my name is uh, Shilpa Pandeshwar and I work for uh, DAD office in Bangalore. Uh, so what is exactly DAD? Uh, in English it is called as German Academic Exchange Service and in German language it is the Deutsche Akademische Austauschdienst. So what is exactly our work? We are a non-profit funding organization. Uh, so every country in the world has a DAD office which has been set up by the German Education Ministry to provide scholarships to students to come to Germany and pursue their further education and also possibly research. This slide would give you an overview of our presence all over the world. So what does DAD do? So like I said earlier, we are a funding organization and uh, the reason why I am giving a presentation here to you today is also because we give also information about higher studies in Germany. Yeah, so this is also a part of our job. We give general information about higher studies in Germany and as well as that as research. And this is the kind of funding that the German government gives out, just approximate as to how much the German government actually spends on funding programs for international students to come down there. So why are we suggesting you to come down to Germany and pursue your further education or research? Germany is one of the few countries which has always been in the forefront of research. No matter which era you are talking about, Germany has been in the topmost position. And now there are very much available courses in the English language, which was previously not the case. Now many courses are available in the English language and PhD can be pursued in English purely. This is one of the very big reasons why Germany has become even more popular. And of course, you all would have heard that uh, there is practically no tuition fee in Germany. Yeah? And if there is also, it's very minimal. And so that is one of the few reasons. So the presence of foreign students in Germany is quite high. People are very much surprised. We have in Germany around 12% of the population being foreign students pursuing their education. This is unlike US and UK. In fact, in US, it is only 3.5% and in Germany, it's pretty high. Currently in the preferred destination, all over the world, Germany is placed fourth after USA, Britain and Australia as the preferred destination for higher studies. The common question, how many Indians are there in Germany? Well, there are a lot of Indians in Germany. Yeah, we are in the master's level, in fact, we are the first, the number of people pursuing their master's in Germany. And in the PhD level, we are the fourth again. So it's quite high and uh, it has been increasing steadily. In around by 2008 itself, it has jumped by 70.59%. And it's only increasing, not decreasing. Just a brief knowledge about Germany and the inventions and discover, uh, discoveries in Germany. Like I said earlier, because Germany has been so focused on research, there have been a lot of inventions and discoveries done in Germany because there are a lot more things to add in it. And the number of global laureates in Germany is pretty high. In 25 years, Germany has had 25 Nobel laureates. The current count is 28 and they would like to keep on increasing this count. Where do you go to study in Germany? It is not at a college, it is at a university. Higher education is pursued at a university. Colleges are meant for music, arts and films. Yeah? And uh, at the universities, there are two types of universities. One is a university, also known as technical university. The second type is the University of Applied Sciences. I will, of course, explain to you further. So what are universities, or also known as technical universities? At universities, the studies are pursued at a more research-oriented manner. Uh, so you can, after your master's, you can also do your PhD at a university. Yeah? And all ranges of courses are offered there right from your MBA, uh, for that matter, even as basic as humanities or uh, life sciences, engineering, everything is being pursued at a university, yeah? at master's as well as PhD. And the second type, the University of Applied Sciences. At the University of Applied Sciences, you can't pursue PhD. Yeah, that option is not there. But if you pass out from a University of Applied Sciences, you can still pursue PhD, but at a university. It's not possible to pursue it at a University of Applied Sciences. 
uh, that's because at the University of Applied Sciences, the teaching methodology is more practice oriented, hands on training. And I must add here, there is no difference in the quality of teaching between a university and a university of applied sciences. The quality is the same, no matter which type of university you plan to pursue your further education. The degree is also going to be the same. Yeah? It's for you to decide where you would prefer to further learn. And like I said earlier, you can do only masters, up to masters at the University of Applied Sciences. Yeah. Now, this slide we have added because of the two online databases that we have given here. Germany is a very online country yeah, for admissions. Please, if you're interested to study in Germany, you would need to visit our online databases study-in.de and also dad.de slash international hyphen programs. Yeah, because all universities which are offering international programs, that is if you want to study your education in English language or even bilingual is possible, that is half or uh, partly 25% of the course could also be in the German language. Such courses are known as international programs and they are all listed in our database. Yeah, so you can get a list of universities as per your course discipline and then individually visit each university for further information about the admission, etc. Because in Germany, every university is autonomous by nature. Because of that, each of them have their own deadlines, yeah, own admission procedure. It's not generalized, unlike, unlike other countries. So every university has their own deadlines. And each university also has a separate admissions office to whom you can interact in case of doubts. You don't need agents, etc. for your admissions in Germany. You just need to view everything online. So now directly we skip to the PhD because masters is pretty much straightforward. Yeah, you don't require as such uh, major documents. It's the same as any other country. It's uh, just your TOEFL or IELTS, uh, GRE or GMAT depending on your course. Whereas PhD, I would like to elaborate here. There are two types of courses in PhD. One is an individual doctoral program. In this program, you have to find a professor in your field of interest and uh, you have to provide him with a research proposal. Yeah, in this research proposal, you have to explain what are you planning to do for the next three to four years in Germany. Yeah, if he accepts you as a student, then you have enrolled yourself into an individual doctoral program and you can go off to Germany for your PhD for the next three to four years. So this is depending on you and your professor, how long you, either of you would like the course to be pursued. Yeah. The advantage with an individual doctoral program is uh, you can do it independently. You will not be working in groups, you will be alone. Yeah. And uh, only the professor and you will be deciding the course of your progress, etc. There is no third party involvement in this way. Yeah. That is the advantage of individual doctoral program and I must add here that at DAD we have a scholarship for individual doctoral program. If you are pursuing your PhD, you can find all the details in daddelhi.org. Yeah. But we require the invitation letter from your professor. The second type is structured doctoral program. This is like applying for a course. Yeah, you, there is no involvement of a professor in that stage. Of course, during interview stage, the professors are involved. But structured doctoral program, this will be again listed in our online database that I have shown you earlier. Here, uh, the universities will display on their website the current openings for uh, PhD programs and you just have to apply within the deadlines. Yeah, you don't need to provide a research proposal because you will be participating in a research which is already being taking place in the university. And so this is uh, one good advantage if you are not so keen in making your own research proposal, etc. And here you need to work in uh, small groups. You will not be working completely individually. And so you should be open-minded even to this matter. Yeah, this is again listed in the online databases. So the scholarships available in India, uh, generally most of the scholarships are available in the research area that is from PhD onwards.
for masters also there are a lot of scholarships these are available even at the university you can view all these scholarships available for you from other german organizations you know besides dad in funding hyphen guide dot de yeah masters and phd you can find the scholarship details here at dad delhi dot org all the scholarships available to indian students from the german government is very clearly mentioned in our website you can see all the eligibility requirements etc over here now we do not make any exceptions to the eligibility requirements so please go through the eligibility requirements first before applying so a very common question german language skills yes german is very much required in germany because uh, german is the mother tongue in germany not english yeah but there are courses like i mentioned earlier there are in english etc but of course to make you more attractive to the job market and if it is required as a part of the admission procedure there are many universities even if the course is in english language they do ask you for a beginner level of german language which you can pursue at any of the goethe institute or also known as max muller bhavan across india we have even a goethe institute here in hyderabad so from there you can pursue some levels of german language as per whatever your university is asking yeah even if your university is not asking it for the admission procedure it is highly recommended that you at least do a beginner level of german language it will only help you not deter you yeah so this is a sample schedule yeah please don't get carried away by just seeing the months here and thinking you are late or something first of all which universities you are planning to apply to first thing you need to do is go to the university website and see the deadlines because not all have the same deadlines there are two intakes in germany one is the winter intake and one is the summer intake what sample schedule we have given here is a winter intake that's because most of the universities in germany offer courses during winter time that's why we have given it in this manner so you just see the deadlines and within the deadlines you must have all the documents and you should send it across to the university once you get the admit which normally the answer comes within 2 to 3 months then you have to apply for visa this all schedule is given for master students for phd students if you are an individual doctoral program student that is with a professor you are pursuing your phd you can apply to him any time of the year there is no restriction yeah there is for structured doctoral program yes there is a timeline yeah that's the reason why you need to check out the deadline it could be during winter session so what are the requirements of visa now if you are uh, from any part of the world there is definitely an embassy german embassy and also consulates like india has many of them for people from andhra pradesh you have to apply at the chennai consulate for example for a german visa and you will be applying for a student visa after you receive confirmation of your admissions you will be applying for a student visa all student visa details are provided online on the german consulate or embassy website this is the case of india if you are not a resident of india and you are applying for a student visa etc you can view the website of the embassy or consulate that you are planning to apply for yeah and uh, one of the uh, part of the uh, visa processing that is required very important thing is proof of financial means this is very important for the german government and this is definitely required this is the reason the well, living expenses are very high you may not be having tuition fee in germany yeah but there is something that you need to think about is the living expenses as per the german government every month the ideal living expenses for a student could be around 600 to 700 euros yeah because of this reason the german government would like you to provide proof of financial means before you go to germany not the university but for visa yeah this of course this amount 600 to 700 euros is not on paper only 
it of course varies depending on you yourself your personality the living uh, your own living expenses the type of city you are living of course it definitely varies it could be even lesser than 600 to 700 euros but for the german government they would like a proof that you can sustain your time in germany only for the first year of staying there not every year yeah the ways of providing proof of financial means are also given very clearly on the websites of the german consulate and embassy you can view them and only these ways the main the ones which are mentioned on the website are the ones which they accept so very general question why is there no tuition fee can anybody guess why is there no tuition fee in germany yes because they are government funded yes almost there okay here yeah, it's true it's all the universities are german funded um, by the government funded but from where does this money come yeah it comes from the taxes of german citizens and we although being international students we also get this benefit of studying in germany that's why there is no tuition fee because tax money is used for education but still we do have to pay something known as semester fees this is mandatory once in 6 months even for a german citizen yeah international students as well as uh, german citizens pay this at the time of studying at the german university this will vary again it would it could be around 200 to 500 euros for what is this money required it is inclusive of something known as um, semester ticket which allows you to travel for free within the location that you are staying administration charges are also inclusive of this yeah, so the money that you contribute is going back to you itself yeah but this is definitely required and i'm sure with your part time also you could cover this yeah a very frequent question part time in fact the laws have been changed in germany in 1st of august last year a new law was implemented and as per the new law the part time hours and days everything has been increased now it is 120 full days or 240 half days in a year an international student can pursue his part time and uh, you don't require a work permit to do your part time this is already self understood when you are getting your student visa you don't require the permit for the same 